Welcome to our keynote lecture on the rationale for aortic annuloplasty to standardize aortic valve repair. In this talk, we will delve into the pathological process of dystrophic aortic insufficiency, defining its characteristics and classifying the three aortic phenotypes which make up the spectrum of dystrophic AI. We will look at the repairability of these valves and what our international guidelines recommend in terms of management. Before taking a deep dive into the techniques of annuloplasty, we will review the recent findings in the anatomy of the annulus. We will discuss the two most commonly used techniques of valve sparing root replacement, namely the remodeling and reimplantation techniques, comparing their advantages and disadvantages. And we will then take a close look at our standardized approach to aortic valve and root repair for each of the three phenotypes of dystrophic AI. Dystrophic AI is characterized by dilatation of the aortic annulus, sinuses and or sinotubular junction, preventing coaptation of pliable leaflets which may also be subjected to prolapse. Depending on whether the sinus of Valsalva and or the tubular ascending aorta are dilated, three phenotypes can be individualized. The first is a normal root and ascending aorta with all diameters being less than 40 to 45 millimeters. This is the case of isolated AI. The second is dilatation of the aortic root where the sinus of Valsalva are more than 45 millimeters. This is the case of a root aneurysm. And the third is dilatation of the ascending aorta. Dilatation of the annulus and STJ are almost constantly associated with any of these aortic phenotypes as a combined mechanism of AI. According to the EuroHeart survey on valvular heart disease, dystrophic AI represents the most common etiology of AI in Western countries. Although patients with dystrophic AI are good candidates for repair, only less than 2% of patients have their valves spared. The recent STS database showed only 14% of patients who underwent aortic root surgery received a valve sparing root procedure. This leaves 80% of root procedures for AI and or root aneurysm as being performed as a Bentor procedure. The 2017 European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgeons and the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines for Valvular Heart Disease recommend that for management of aortic root aneurysm to use reimplantation or remodeling with aortic annuloplasty for valve sparing root replacement. This refers to the need of addressing the annulus. They also recommend a heart team discussion for selected patients with pliable, non-calcified aortic valve insufficiency, in whom aortic valve repair may be a feasible alternative to valve replacement. These are class 1c indications. A dilated aortic annulus greater than 25 to 28 mm, if left untreated, is clearly documented as a major risk factor for failure of bicuspid and tricuspid aortic valve repair. Aortic annuloplasty efficiently addresses this issue, aiming at a sustained long-term outcome by reducing the dilated aortic annulus and improving the surface of coaptation. This is similar to the case of mitral valve repair. The aortic annulus has been described in different ways, with terms such as virtual ring, basal ring or ventricular aortic junction being used. However, the term annulus is a consensus terminology and defines the inflow of the aortic root as the plane passing through the nadir of the aortic cusps. They can be measured either on echo long axis view or by direct intubation intraoperatively. External dissection down to the subvalvular plane is very important in external ring annuloplasty or reimplantation root procedures. On tricuspid aortic valves with a normal sized aortic root, external dissection of the annulus may be achieved down to the subvalvular level below the nadirs of the left and the non coronary cusps, and in 80% of cases below or within 3 mm of the nadir of the right cusp. The muscular part of the annulus is its thickest portion with a mean thickness of 2.5 mm. 
Therefore, an external annuloplasty would produce a reduction of the annulus by at least 5 mm. Large pooled echocardiographic studies have shown that the mean STJ junction diameter is 27.2 mm and that it is larger than the aortic annulus with a mean of 22.3 mm. This gives an STJ to annulus ratio of 1.2. Therefore, an aortic annulus larger than 25 mm and an STJ diameter larger than 30 mm are deemed as functionally dilated. The importance of root geometry on valve competence has been demonstrated by a number of finite element studies. The reduction of STJ induces a symmetrical prolapse by lowering the effective height of the cusp. In the same respect, dilatation of the aortic annulus reduces mostly the coaptation height and does not affect the effective height. As a result, an annuloplasty will essentially increase the coaptation height with almost no effect on effective height. Two operations have been described to replace the aortic root whilst preserving the native aortic valve. Jakub described a remodeling technique whereby a tube graft was modified to create three scallops or neosinuses which are sutured to the aortic wall directly adjacent to the cusp insertion points. This allows the root to expand during systole through the interleaflet triangles. David described a reimplantation technique where the aortic valve is contained within a tube graft. Both techniques treat the dilation of the sinotubular junction by bringing the commissure to the diameter of the tube. However, whereas the remodeling technique has the advantage of preserving the geometry of the three sinus of Valsalva and its resultant vortical flow, as well as maintaining a dynamic expansal route, it does not on its own address the annulus. A dilated annulus more than 25 mm has been shown to be a risk factor for recurrent AI and reoperation after the remodeling procedure alone for both bicuspid and tricuspid valves. This is not a problem with the reimplantation technique, which includes an annuloplasty through the proximal suture line of the tube. However, the reimplantation technique suffers with regards to hemodynamic effects, showing loss of vortical flow, risk of cusp impact on the tube, and rapid valve closure. We have combined the advantages of both techniques to carry out a remodeling plus subvalvular annuloplasty. This gives us superior hemodynamics with regards to vortical flow formation and preserved root expansibility. Isolated AI is described when the sinus of Valsalva and the ascending aorta are both less than 40 to 45 mm. Despite the absence of significant aneurysmal disease, isolated dystrophic AI patients present almost constantly with an enlarged annulus or STJ as part of the dystrophic spectrum of AI lesions. Aortic annuloplasty was first performed to treat isolated AI by Taylor in 1958, the so-called aortic circumclusion, where silk sutures were placed as a circumferential annuloplasty running underneath the coronary arteries on a beating heart. This operation quickly disappeared as the first aortic valve replacement was carried out only two years later. Since then, a number of different techniques of annuloplasty have been utilized with different outcomes. In 2003, Lansac and colleagues developed a double sub and supravalvular annuloplasty technique using two external rings placed at the annulus and STJ for isolated aortic valve repair. Since the signs of Valsalva are not dilated, the annuloplasty is performed with an open ring passed below the coronaries, without detaching them in order to increase the surface of coaptation to protect the repair. Furthermore, the STJ is addressed in the form of a supravalvular annuloplasty. Whereas in valve sparing root procedures, the graft automatically provides a supravalvular STJ annuloplasty by bringing the commissure to the diameter of the tube, the STJ must be separately addressed in isolated aortic valve repair. In order to achieve a good coaptation height and long-term competency of the valve, the physiological ratio of annulus to STJ diameter, which is 1.2, must be re-established as part of the repair process. 
therefore a separate expand cell annuloplasty ring at the STJ level, in addition to a subvalvular annuloplasty at the annular level, using a standardized sizing system, provides both a reduction in respective diameters as well as maintaining the geometric ratio. In case of a dilated ascending aorta with preserved root, the supravalvular annuloplasty at STJ level will be performed by the supracoronary tube. As dystrophic AI almost constantly leads to dilatation of the annulus and STJ, we have developed a standardized approach to aortic valve repair, which aims to restore the ratio between the STJ and the annulus. The procedure used is dependent on the phenotype of the aorta, but all procedures follow the same steps. Since 2003, we have operated on over 480 patients using the standardized approach, with a 92% freedom from reoperation at 8 years, similar for both bicuspid and tricuspid valves, according to each phenotype of the proximal aorta. Furthermore, since 2007, we have used a systematic effective height assessment, an expansile calibrated annuloplasty ring with a remodeling process, which has improved freedom from AI grade 3 or above to 100%, reoperation at 99.1%, and major adverse valve related events at 96.3% at 7 years follow up. More recently, we looked at the impact of STJ stabilization on long term durability of isolated AI repair showing that the use of double ring annuloplasty was associated with 100% freedom from recurrence of AI grade 3 compared to 67% in the single annuloplasty group at 6 years. Furthermore, use of the double annuloplasty was correlated with 97% freedom from aortic valve related reintervention compared to 73% in the single annuloplasty group. In conclusion, current medical evidence shows that aortic valve repair is safe, reduces valve-related mortality compared to prosthetic valve replacement, produces better quality of life, as was the case for mitral valve repair. Dissemination of aortic valve repair techniques will improve with standardization of a calibrated annuloplasty, thus increasing the rate of aortic valve repair for both tricuspid and bicuspid valves. A calibrated annuloplasty should be performed at both the sub and the supravalvular levels in order to restore the STJ annulus ratio and should be adapted according to the phenotype of the root and the ascending aorta.